everybody, I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We've come into the little office area for today's video just because I felt like it. Um, have I even brushed my hair today? I think I just stuck it up to clean my teeth this morning and here we are at 4pm. 4, 4 it's still not done anything with it, so soz. Um, I thought, this, this may well be slightly controversial, and I wasn't going to do a video on this. And then there was a little, a little push, a little niggle, and I'm like, I'm gonna have my say as well. Um, this is, I don't know how this is gonna go. I haven't had time to plan this video properly, but what I'm going to address and give my, which may be a little bit controversial view on, is this lawsuit, the Hermes lawsuit that is going on. So for those of you that, haven't been following this and don't know what's going on. Basically, there is an Hermes antitrust lawsuit going on, whereby two plaintiffs in California have basically placed, they're trying to run a class action. Um, and the claim is about what we refer to here in the luxury community and those that know Hermes. I'm one of these people that knows Hermes. Um, as pre-sale. Now, I don't subscribe to pre-sale, but I'm gonna talk through, I'm coming at this from a UK perspective as well. Um, so bear that in mind because it is different. But I, what I'm seeing around this community and being banded about from different YouTubers is, is a lot of opinion, is a, it's more what's coming out of the comments as opposed to what people are actually posting in their videos. There is an awful lot of criticism of the brand coming out. And I think I'm, I'm I find it quite sad to read some of the comments. Um, I am a lover of the Hermes brand. That is my perspective. That's where I'm coming from. And that's, to say I, that's not to say that I agree with everything, but that's where I'm coming from. And I think it saddens me a little bit to see some people getting so engrossed and caught up and almost enjoying the hatred. That's what I'm not liking to see. So anyway, basically, there's this class action. The claim is that there has been, like almost basically we'll call it a breach of um, antitrust law. And basically, Two people have been trying to buy a Birkin. For those of you that don't know, this is a Birkin. Mine is a particularly gorgeous Birkin 30 in toga leather in rose poupre in with palladium hardware. Um, and it's my first ever Hermes bag, but more about that in a minute. Um, so basically, they've been trying to buy one of these and hadn't been successful. Um, but it's bigger than that. You know, this is where this pre-spend phenomenon comes in. Um, so basically, when they've requested to make a purchase, the sales associate has said no and directed them to buy other Hermes goods, building up a purchase history um, sufficient to be approved for that. So that's basically it. Um, there's been, um, um, there's a read, there's a quite an interesting article that Purse Blog has there's on there, which is quite interesting. And there is some criticism of the actual filing itself, you know, things like typos and spelling errors and, you know, whatever. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, the allegation is that Hermes will sell everything except for Birkins direct to clients on its website. We know that's not true. Um, and also that Hermes has expanded millions of dollars in the United States advertising the Birkin handbag. And as a direct result, they have sold thousands of them. Now, I don't live in America, so I can't say for that, but from my experience about Hermes advertising, that's not something that I would have observed in the UK, but I can't, couldn't possibly say. And then the, the other another allegation is that Hermes has been able to increase the price of the Birkin because it requires clients to buy other items before they can buy one. Um, 
Now, when you look, uh, I mean, in the luxury community, there's always a lot of talk about whenever there's the latest price increase. It's usually Chanel and Louis Vuitton um, that are causing the uproar. Hermes do one price rise every year in January, and it's usually of a tradition. I mean, this year actually, so January 24 was a slightly bigger increase than we normally see, but quite often it's around the 4% mark. Um, but it goes up. But this is luxury, this is not essentials. I've never had a problem with it. Um, these are stupid money anyway, it just makes them a bit more stupid money, and that's how I see them. And if I can't afford one, then I can't buy one. Um, and that does happen. <laughs> that is life. That's life with, with many other things as well. Um, other implications are that the Birkin's the only product that is never to be found in a retail store unless the client is deemed worthy of purchasing. Um, another point was that plaintiffs said that um, you know, a Birkin can never be ordered and there's no way to order a bag in the style, size, colour, leather and hardware that a consumer wants. Um, so yeah, there's, a, there's some further detail anyway. Um, but basically the plaintiffs have been trying to buy a Birkin. They can't and they've been buying other goods instead as part of this book, like I say, what we know colloquially as pre-spend. So where is this going to go? My personal view, and I'm, I'm interested to see the result of this, but my personal review, view is that I don't think that there will be any evidence to suggest that there is this tying of the, of the pre-sales to the Birkin. Because that's what this is all about, is saying that you're basically, the antitrust bit comes in where you're actually tying the purchase of the Birkin to other goods. Now, I don't think, again, I don't work for Hermes, I'm not a lawyer uh, anywhere in the world, um, but I just suspect that there will not be a written down procedure or guidance for staff saying that that is the policy, that that is the process. And I think because of that, that's why I think this might fall flat on its face. Um, we'll see. Maybe there will be some emails or some correspondence unearthed that's nice and juicy and will give us, you know, give us that dirt that a lot of people are looking for. I don't know. Um, now, anecdotally, in this community, anecdotally, you know, the fact that we have a word for it, pre-spend, suggests that this is a phenomenon that does exist. I'm not saying that it, that it doesn't. I just don't think they'll find the evidence of it um, as a procedure. Um, so I think that, certainly in the US, I think that this, from what I read about and hear and anecdotally, I think that that absolutely is a thing. How it operates, I don't know. Um, what is the best way? I mean, that's the other question, is what is the best way? We've got, and I'm, I'm not actually deliberately sat here with an Hermes mug, I just realised with that I'm using on my Hermes coaster. Um, my Hermes coaster sits on this desk, and my husband made me a cup of tea, and because it's the weekend, we're using the special mugs. These mugs only come out as part of weekend celebrations, but they're very nice. This is a hippo mobile. Um, I just realised that I'm sat here with a Hermes mug, an Hermes coaster, and an Hermes blanket behind my chair. All of which are in the normal positions in the house. <laughs> but basically, you know, do people want to buy this? Well, me, obviously, yes, and I actually bought this from Luxury Promise. But, you know, are people being made to buy... Oh, okay, I've got a lot of tea in here, so I'll spill it. This, to get this. In the UK, from my experience, the answer is no. Like I say, it sounds like things are quite different in America, particularly in California. Um, so... My experience is that, and the UK has the wish system as well, so that we'll come on, I'll come on to that. When I bought my first ever Hermes bag, which is this Birkin that I've just told you about, this is before we had the wish system. This was in 2017, I believe, I bought this beauty. And 
basically I went into, I didn't have much of a purchase history. I think I have bought a pair of shoes online because I couldn't get them in store in the size I wanted. I bought a pair of shoes online. I bought a Bastia coin purse. It's like the cheapest item practically that Hermes sell online that I collected in store. And then I was buying a belt that I wanted. Um, and as part of that, I was in store and I'd seen Jerusha Couture who had this fabulous garden party, 30, in this rose poupre colour and I loved it. I loved the colour and that's what I wanted. So I went in to my local Hermes store close to where I work in London and I asked them for that, for a garden party. I was told no, didn't have a garden party, but they got a Birkin 30 in the same colour with Palladium hardware coming in the week's time, would I like it? I was not prepared for this, <laughs> either budget wise or, or anything. I was like, I'd always wanted a Birkin, but I actually wanted to get a Kelly first. I was always being more of a Kelly girl. So I of course said yes, absolutely, because I was in love with this colour and you know what, I was like, Yes, I wanted a grey, I wanted a grey Kelly um, in grey tan or grey asphalt and then I wanted to get myself a colourful Birkin. In the meantime, I wanted this garden party 30 in this colour. But I was like, well, let's skip the garden party. We'll get the Birkin in the colour in the same size and then we'll just worry about the Kelly afterwards. Because <laughs> I think with, with Hermes, when, when it comes, when your exact combination you want turns up, you take it, you do, because and I get this from, from, the, from the case because how do you know when exactly your combo of what you want is going to turn up? You can ask for it, you can wait for it. With seasonal colours it may be harder, you know, something like a taupe or black, you know, will always be around. You know, a black Birkin will always be around. Don't know how long you have to wait. A number of weeks, a number of years. Um, but they will be in existence. This colour may not. Um, so that was how I got my first Birkin. There was no pre-spend, there was no um, commitment that I had to make to buy anything there and then or in the future. Um, the conversation happened as I was leaving the shop, I was like on my way out to the door just asking. Um, and when the bag came there was no pressure to buy it, that I could have thought about it for a few days, it was a Friday I went in to buy it. I could have thought about it over the weekend and gone in on the following Monday and bought it. There was no pressure whatsoever. And there never has been from my store. Um, sometimes they might show me things, but there's never any pressure. Normally it's my essay trying to teach me, talk me out of buying something and, yeah, do you want this? Or do you want to think about it? And I'm like, no, give me the bag. Or give me whatever it is. No, nope, want it. Um, when I was buying um, a, a bag and I was looking at something else, like a scarf as well. I think I'd asked about the scarf first, and then I was, it was one of them, it was my Constance. So when I got my Constance in October last year, I'd gone in, I'd arranged to go in to get a scarf that I wanted. And at the same time, I was offered the bag that I expressed an interest in that was on display that I was then able to buy. As I'm doing that, and my essay knows that, you know, these things are a big purchase for me. And he's like, do you still, you know, don't worry about the scarf if you just want to get the bag. And I was like, no, I want the scarf. You know, yes, it's extravagant, but I said I wanted the scarf. That wasn't a ploy to me to try and get the bag. I wanted the scarf because I like the scarf. Um, so I bought both. But the, my point is that he was actually almost saying, don't get the scarf, just buy the bag. That was an option for me that was readily available with no pressure, no sarcasm, nothing. So it saddens me to hear that people are in a different position in the US. It saddens me that Hermes is being dragged through this. I'm not saying it's not, some of it isn't self-induced. And it saddens me to read all of these comments where people are really just having a dig, you know, serves them right and this, that and the other. And there is a lot of bitterness out there. There really is. And, and that's what does sadden me. At the same time, I get it. I get when you really want a bag and you're trying and you're trying and you and you don't know what the rules are, you don't know how to, I get how frustrating that can be. Um, 
I have and there's dr droughts. I don't get whatever I want. Um, on the point they're saying that the plaintiffs were saying, you know, we, you can't just order a bag to exactly the specification that you want. Clearly are unaware of the a la carte or special order or HSS process. This is my Kelly 25 in Chev in the colour Natta and Guitel Terrell with Pen Brass Hardware. Um, I designed this. I was lucky enough to get offered a special order. Again, I'm not a massive spender, but I was lucky enough and I'm loyal to my um, store that I was lucky enough to be able to do this. So I think they need to maybe... It suggests to me they need to do a bit more Hermes research and I think if you're going to take... If you're going to take someone, you know, if you're going to do, you know, do this class action, if you're really going to go there, I think you need to be better familiar with your facts, is my view from what I've read, which hasn't been extensive. Um, so yeah, so that's my take on things. Um, I am interested to know the comments, but can we keep it, you know, can we not have it as just a brand bash? Can we not, you know, absolutely everybody's view is welcome, everybody's view has a place, everybody's view has value. I just don't want it to be, you know, some of the some of the comments I've read elsewhere, they've just been so full of hatred and so full of bitterness. Um, everyone's experience has been different. My experience with Hermes has been a mix. I've done a separate video and I'll link it at the end in terms of my, you know, the secrets of getting Hermes bags. I have a number of Hermes bags some of which are boutique bought, like these two, some of which I bought pre-loved. By the bigger sizes pre-loved, you get them cheaper than retail. Um, it's the small bags that go expensive. So anything 35 and above, you're gonna get cheaper retail typically, unless it's very sought after. And particularly some of the exotics, that's where you can really save some money as well if you're into that. Um, but, sorry, I digress, because so many thoughts. So many thoughts, a little time. Okay, menopause kicks in again. That was my train of thought. Let's have a sip of tea to remind ourselves. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think the solution is, because this is what the other thing that you, you, you know, you play by your mind, because we've got this wish system in the UK at the moment. And I think a lot of the idea behind that is to give people that haven't yet had the opportunity to to be able to get a Birkin or a Kelly, to be able to get one. So you can, without any pre-spend, you can go into a, you have to go into a store, but without any pre-spend, you can go into a store. You have to be quite particular now, they've changed the rules slightly, but you do your wish. So you say, for example, I would like a gold Birkin 30 with gold hardware, please. That's your wish done. It, now they, now they, it was, I think, eight or nine months, it's now a full year, you then, have that wish which is valid for a year and you wait and it may or it may not come in. Now I've had wishes, I have not had a single wish granted on the Hermes wishlist system. Um, granted whilst I had a Kelly 25 on my wish I then got this offer but I never actually got the bag on the wish instead I managed to do something which was so much better. I'm not grateful it was amazing. It's like the best handbag thing I've ever done in my life um, and probably ever will. But we have this wish list system and people that haven't got bags before are able to get them. And I do see in the community that that does happen. Then you've got other people that have maybe already got a good purchase history with Hermes that have got wishes and they're just expiring. Mine have always expired. Um, I'm very grateful with what I've got and I enjoy what I've got and the non-bag items I buy I buy because I want them and I like them. I don't buy them with any other intent or purpose. So for me, it's not a game and it's not unfair and it's not anything else because I do genuinely like the brand. So where does that leave people that genuinely like the brand, that show that they genuinely love the brand? Are we saying that the people that don't and just walking off the street should get a bag over the people that have invested sometimes? It could be tens to hundreds of thousands in the brand. What is the right thing? Um, I think personally there is no right thing. I think that demand outweighs supply. Even with the cost of living crisis, 
demand for Hermes bags outstrips supply. So there's never going to be an easy solution. If you could just walk in and buy whatever's on display, well, there'd be nothing on display. It would just go. So do they need to invest in a greater training program, bring more artisans on board? Do they need to lower the exclusivity of the brand? What is the solution? I think it's quite interesting. I don't think it's an easy one. I don't think it's an easy one to solve at all. Uh, and I'm not going to pretend to know the answer. But I thought I would give my view. I thought I would address it. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what your position is. Um, I think it's an interesting one and I'm definitely very interested to see how this plays out. And then what is the, what is the knock on effect outside of America? You know, we, we d say this case gets won by the plaintiffs. What does that mean for Europe? What does that mean for London? Um, you know, which is where in the UK where we have the most Hermes um, stores. Um, not quite all of them, but the majority of them. You know, what, what does that mean? Does that mean that our system will change? Will it not? Um, I think it's, yeah, I don't, I personally don't think that it would change because we have this wish list system. Um, and I have certainly never experienced myself any pressure to buy non quota bag items to be able to get a quota bag but um, everyone's experience is different and I can only talk from my own experience but like I say as an Hermes enthusiast as a handbag lover I thought that I would talk it through with you so for me and two of my favourites I know it's okay the door's shut the others can't hear me um, it's goodbye, take care, and I will see you very soon.